Hi YouTube, this is Tracy Kelly again from Homeschooling is My Superpower. And today I wanted to do a video on how I teach math to my kindergartner and my third grader. I have made a video in the past about um, teaching reading and teaching a few other subjects. So I basically just want to break down how you would go about uh, teaching math without a math curriculum for the newbies and for people who may be just looking for ideas. I surf YouTube all the time trying to find some things I can add into my day or some things that you know I can kind of use to keep learning interesting and fun. So I'm going to actually do this video just to give you some ideas or to help you with um, you know your math setting up your math curriculum if you're a new newbie. First of all, um, our math day, of course I just said I have a kindergartner, five year old, and a third grader that is eight. And I actually um, have four components that I do of our, of our math curriculum or our math day. The first uh, part, I usually start with what I like to call mental math. With mental math, what I usually do is I give them both a problem that they can do in their head. Of course, mental math. Uh, for instance, for my third grader, it may be something as simple as, um, let's see here. It may be something as simple as this, 30 plus 52 plus 1. Um, he, in his head, should be able to look at this without stacking, without any other help, and tell me what the sum is. Um, I also give them, uh, well, let me give you an example for my kindergartner. Her problem may be something like this. This would be her mental math problem. And she basically would try to tell me um, in her head what 3 plus 4 is, or from her memory, um, what 3 plus 4 is. Um, after I give them the problem and they tell me what their sum is, I like for them to give me another way that they could have solved the problem um, in their head. If they looked at it and solved it right away, I still want another option. Uh, I, usually I give them a sheet of paper. They can write it out as a problem. Or operation and the second way I like to see it is in a diagram or a picture so for my kindergarten it's easy pretty much she would draw circles or squares or whatever to show me this is how I got it um, my third grader what he usually practices is decomposition or he breaks down the numbers so for him he would probably leave 30 the way it was but he usually likes to uh, do something like this um, 30 plus 50 he'll break down that to 50 plus 3 so he'll take the 2 from the 50 and the 1 here and add 3 so in his head he already knows that 20 plus 30 is is uh i mean i'm sorry 30 plus 50 is 80 plus 3 would be 83 so that's a way that he likes to do it. And actually with decomposition, you can actually break down the numbers into their standard form and you can solve it that way. But he normally uses those two methods. And then of course, I also like for him to diagram it for me to show me exactly how he got it. So at the beginning of our day, we have mental math. After mental math, we do a fast facts. Fast facts for my uh, kindergartner and my third grader are around the same thing. They have two minutes to solve a uh, you know a sheet of problems. Two minutes only. After the two minutes, however many that they're left with or that they got incorrect, they start over the next day to see if they can get more correct or more completed. Until finally they have the entire sheet completed and every fact is correct. Once they do that, they move on to the next um, sheet, which for my third grader doing multiplication, he moves up to the next uh, timetable. My daughter, same thing. She's doing different random addition ones. After that, we keep getting more complicated until she's out of addition into subtraction and so on and so on. So I'm going to show you what our fast fat sheets look like. I do not have a laminating machine that is on my wish list right now. Um, this is fast facts for my kindergartner. Uh, she has basically um, beginning addition or simple addition that she completes. And this is what hers looks like. She has two minutes to do this. My third grader, he has 
more problems but he has the same two minutes to complete them so far he's completed this he just got a couple wrong so i'm making him redo it again but he's gotten all of them um done in two minutes and after this he's going to move up to the next um numeral of facts after fast facts i give them one fact for the for the day um it's a random fact for my uh, third grader, he's doing multiplication, so I may give him, today your, your fact of the day is eight times nine. He gets the index card, he writes the fact on the index card, the uh, problem on the front, and the answer on the back. Uh, my kindergartner does an addition fact, same thing, index card. They save the index card every day they build up until by the end of the week they should have five facts. Um, towards the end of the week, I go ahead and quiz them on the four facts that they've had previously in the week. And they have, you know, a certain amount, it's basically like a little paper quiz to see if they remember without looking at the index card, the, uh, the answer to the problems. So we have our mental math, we have our fast facts. They do the fact of the day, which I kind of, you know, kind of put it together with the fast facts. And then once we completed that, we move into our um, bookwork. Our bookwork for us, we're still following an easy peasy, which you can find at www.allinonehomeschool.com. It is actually a free curriculum uh, for uh, pre-K actually through uh, 12th grade. And basically she has, what well, she's a blessing, she has actually taken her children's work that she's found for them and she's compiled it into one website per grade level every day you have your lessons and you can just pull them up and she's already downloaded if you have to go to anything it's already linked to the to the day to the assignment and it's a one-stop shop I just supplement a little bit along with that but basically we do whatever assignment is done for that day and if I need to move him on to um, book work He's working out of this workbook this year, which is a Sylvan um, math book, workbook. And it's really good because it's kind of um, very colorful, but it complements just about every subject that we're going to cover this year. And it's great for moving ahead because it's a little bit above third grade level in some things, but it's great too for those who need to supplement and that need to kind of reinforce a skill maybe that they haven't gotten yet. So this is a great workbook. So that's usually how we start with his book work. Easy peasy workbook work. Or if I have a resource worksheet or something like that, he'll do that. Kindergartner, same thing. She does easy peasy. And then she also has this. She's in kindergarten, but she's working out of this. And she's doing very well in the first grade workbook. The kindergarten was a little easy for her. So I found something that is great. Some of the things are a little challenging, but she seems to be doing fine in the math section this is one of the assignments she completed um, which was the addition she did great with it as you can see she didn't get anything wrong um, and they do have some a lot of them are like that um, they do have some color by number things like this that I really like and she likes color by number so we have that and basically she'll work out of here easy peasy and I also some days will give her um, this she loves this because it's a dry erase and she can do her addition facts like this and actually they give her the little counters on the page so if she you know doesn't want to use her fingers or you know we don't have even nipplets around she can count the pictures to do her addition as well she's doing really well though with no um not needing too many counters on manipulatives um speaking of manipulatives if you need counters or things for them to kind of visually count until they grasp the concept of addition, you can use, I use these that are kind of like some little um, blocks. Um, you can use Legos, you can use beans, you can use whatever. And another great creative thing that I've learned in college was uh, you can use M&Ms. M&Ms are great things you can do. Um, not every day, but you can do it uh, for a treat or just for something fun. Today we're going to add using our M&Ms and we use our M&Ms to do three plus two or three take away two, however you want to do it. 
And after they're done with their assignment, of course, they can eat them. And that makes it fun. They look forward to things like that. And if you let them know ahead of time, hey, tomorrow we're going to do our m and counters. That's a great thing to keep kids excited and to, you know, kind of keep things going where they have something to look forward to. Not everyone looks forward to math, but I think if you let them know ahead of time, we're going to be using our m and for our counters. That definitely will give them something to look forward to. Um, also... I have these workbooks that I got at two different dollar stores, but they both were $1 and they were both great. This one came from Dollar General and of course this one is for my kindergartner. This one came from Dollar Tree and I will be doing a small little mini Dollar Tree haul video to show you some cool things that I found. Um, this one was really cool to me. Um, it's a multiplication um, workbook based on the core, Common Core curriculum. Anyone knows me, I'm not a fan of Common Core at all. I don't incorporate a large part of Common Core into our day, but I do uh, introduce them to the concepts of Common Core because I believe that they need to be exposed to it because they both uh, are college bound and I believe that, so far anyway, but I believe that um, they will need to be at least exposed to the concept of Common Core. So I try to introduce certain things to Common Core, one of them being math. Um, this is cool because it has the skills and the uh, topics that are covered based on the standard Georgia standards and the Common Core curriculum here. So I can actually use this for my planning to put by the end of the year what we have done um, that relates to Common Core, what skills that they've done. So this is pretty cool. I like this. And it's colorful as well. It has um, kind of like charts. It has... Um, the um, math problems and I like this book because the math problems are large which is non-intimidating for kids especially that are beginning um, multiplication so it's really cool it doesn't look overwhelming they're large and you know they're it's a good size and then of course the workbook isn't overwhelming either because it's something we can just do in a few weeks just to cover that particular topic or just to keep bringing out um other than that I have a little textbook that I have here that is a, I call it my vintage textbook. But what I like to do is I still pull from it and I try to compare it to what I believe um, they're still doing, um, most of this stuff still in third and fourth grade. So, I, so far, it's not vintage enough where I feel like it's, you know, holding them back from anything. So when I just want to pull from something, maybe to do board work or to just give a random fact or whatever, I can always pour from this. Or if they need an explanation about a skill level, maybe I'm not going you know, in depth enough for them, they can always go back and read the introduction to the topics in the textbook and get the vocabulary and things like that that they need. So those are really the items that I use for math. So to, um, to go back to kind of um, summarize what our day is like again we have um i say four concepts but really it's more like three we do um mental math we do um, our fast facts we do our book work so basically that's what our math looks like in a day and uh, it's working out great i was a little afraid and intimidated at the beginning because if anyone has seen my other videos, we are coming from our uh, state virtual academy and I decided to go on our own this year and I did not purchase a box curriculum. So we've basically been doing everything on our own and it's been turning out actually great. And I was intimidated and I was afraid, but other than having to do more planning and more research to make sure that we're doing what we need to be doing, um, it's still working out great. And they seem to be learning. They seem to be doing just fine with their learning, with the things that they need to do. So I have no complaints. And I'm very, very proud, actually, of how we're doing on our own so far. So basically, that's what I want to cover. I want to show you some of the things that you can do, how you can plan it out. Um, the fast facts is a great thing to keep their skills going. Um, it's something aside from what they're learning. My son is not just doing multiplication. He's moved on from multiplication, but he's doing more things in math. But I like to keep pulling the multiplication facts so that they stay fresh and they become fast facts, as I say. I like for them to be able to look at the problem and know what it is without having to do a lot of 
uh, finger work, a lot of, you know, memorization. They should just look at it just like we can look at two plus two and we know what it is. So same thing with my daughter with addition. I want her to do the fast facts enough to when she sees it, she knows what the problem in the slum is or the difference is or product is or whatever she's working on at the time. So basically that is how we do our day. We do our, our mental math, our fast facts and our seat work and that's it so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope i gave you an idea of things that you can do or just a look into what we do for math and i'll be doing more videos like this i'm just breaking down some of the things that we do to hopefully give you some ideas and some things you can add on to what you've already you know been doing so take care and i will see you soon oh okay look for my um dollar tree haul video it's very many though but I would like to show you some of the things I got. So take care and I will see you soon.